from the ESPN 1280 studios in San Luis Obispo, it's time. It is Living the Run. We're not just chewing the fat. We're getting rid of it. We are your home for everything health and fitness. Living the Run is being brought to you by Puma Aquatics, Standard Process Nutrition, Peak Performance Massage, and to the chiropractic team at Slow Wellness Center. Here are your hosts for Living the Run, Rex Stevens and Paul Tarek. Another glorious day on the Central Coast. Another glorious day to live the run. I'm your host, Rex Stevens, alongside Olympian Paul Tarek. Paul Tarek, two weeks in a row. Are we going to be able to make it three, you in studio? It, it's looking good. You know, it's like a, uh, like a weather forecaster. I'm not going to promise anything, but, uh, but it looks good. It, it's, uh, the sun is on the horizon. <laughs> if you're following us for the first time, Living the Run show that we talk everything health and fitness. We try to add something to you, something you can take away from each and every show. Uh, maybe it's a, a, an aspect of nutrition. Maybe it's an aspect of exercise. Maybe it's an aspect of changing some of that mental outlook on things. But a thing to improve your performance, improve your life, improve longevity. Uh, always looking at that, uh, you know, CJ Silas show comes on after us tonight here on ESPN 1280, The Ticket. She comes on from 7 to 8, celebrating her first anniversary of coming back uh, to ESPN, coming in on, on the CJ Silas show. That means we've been here now, Paul, over two years, over two years doing Live in the Run, going strong, promoting health and fitness on the Central Coast. This is the second longest relationship I've ever had, Rich. <laughs> just, it's great. It's big time stuff. Let me, lay, let me lay the show out for you. Great show tonight. As all of you know, we've been talking slow marathon. It's happening this weekend. Second annual slow marathon. Big events happening. Friday, people picking up their packets. Saturday, all day long, motivational speaking. Dean Carnazis, who's going to be joining us at 645 on tonight's show. Ultra Marathon Man will be talking uh, at the booths on Saturday. I know there's a 5K run as well. I know of a, a lady that I see actually in the clinic. Great, great uh, story. Woman who lost her leg and is competing at an Ironman level now. Some great motivational stuff happening on Saturday. And then, of course, on Sunday, the big runs, the half marathon, the marathon, starting at 6 a.m., big kickoff. So big topic for us for sure. But we got Dean Carnazes, 645 at the end of the show. We're going Van McCarty, last year's winner, male winner uh, of the slow marathon, struggling with an injury right now, but Van's going to come in. We're going to talk to him a little bit about looking at the course the second time, what he expects, what's the competition coming in for this race as well. We'll also check in with Ryan Joyner early on in the show. Ryan talked a lot last week. We talked a little bit about those single leg squats, gaining that stability through the pelvis. A lot of people with low back pain, a lot of people with hip pain, knee pain, etc. Trying to be able to rehab that. So Ryan from Athlon Elite will be joining us too. So big show tonight, Paul. Yeah, you know, it, every week you find somebody that makes me feel worse and worse for not getting out there and running. I mean, I, you have somebody who's lost a leg doing an Ironman, and, and it's just going to, you're going to shame me into working out tonight, aren't you? Like 10.30, I'm going to have to go out and get something in. Yeah, you know, I hope we can get Karen on the show maybe next week. Uh, she, the other thing, Paul, over 60 years old. <laughs> over 60 years old. She's just absolutely stunning as an athlete. Great, great mental focus. Uh, done, done some good things. Paul, you're always invited to come out with Rando and us. Uh, oh, and I. And uh, now we got uh, another guy, former college football player at Cal Poly, Brandon Shepard, running back for them for four years, four-year starter, I think 2001 to 2005. He's coming out with us, too, on the track at Cal Poly. Mondays and Wednesdays around one o'clock. We'd love to see your mug out there with us as well. You know what? I will actually, I will actually come in and, and join you this mon- this next Monday, Wednesday. I will actually come and join you. Uh, be fantastic. Uh, good stuff out there. You know, uh, Rando lately is, uh, has been up in, up in the ante. He's been going to twelve hundred repeats, which is kind of interesting. I hit the eight hundred repeat repeats today. Uh, we're going to start throwing in some of the pull ups, the push ups, some of this diversity type stuff, uh, bringing in some of the, the CrossFit type mentality but kind of toning it down a little bit, not the uh, the Olympic weightlifting so much, uh, and just trying to bring diversity and challenge one another out there. How was Rando transferred uh, or transitioned you know, from an 
elite athlete extraordinaire to you know weekend warrior father figure you know that was that was a really that was a really hard transition for me yeah no question about it I think it brings up a big topic and you know I'm excited about the topics to come here uh, come end of April come into May into June we're gonna hit some topics like sleep sleep is a big one Paul when you start talking about being a dad uh, having a family and so forth and now trying to get those little bits of shut eye when you can but not getting those long bouts like you used to that were very restorative for not only the mind but also the the tissues themselves for for breaking down inflammation minimizing inflammation if you will so uh, it's a tough transition for for any parent uh, going through there and especially someone who was an elite athlete at one time you know going back to it we, we talk about these inspirational people that we get on the show and they're doing incredible things and you know the general person the general public doesn't need to go out and think about doing those things and doing something incredible they can if they want to I, I think the big thing that people need to take away from the show is is just get out there be active lead an active lifestyle you know I ran into a couple guys today uh, softball players slow natives uh, you know dads themselves still get out there they have a good time uh, you know I'm sure that fitness isn't probably their number one goal out there it's probably just hanging out with their buddies and enjoying it but they're doing something active and I think uh, you know you, there's a lot of tips and takeaways from the show that you can you know pick up and, and put that towards your daily life you know try to avoid injury continue doing what you're doing having fun hey and you kind of hit it right on the head there too is, is to get back to our goals and we got to be thankful for all our sponsors that we've had uh, just thus far and we're always out there looking for people to sponsor and understand this. You know, Samantha Pruitt was on the show, uh, race director for the Slow Marathon, and she kind of joked in, the, in one of the breaks that she says, can you believe these guys sit in here and uh, get paid to, to babble and, and just kind of rap on, on, on the radio? And that's not actually what we do. Uh, our goal here is, is to raise level of uh, awareness for health and fitness, but actually what we're trying to do is, is we're talking about giving back to the community, living the run, and trying to get sponsors to come in, not like traditional radio sponsorship, but in, in, an effort to be able to sponsor other athletes, people that are trying to get to races that may have financial uh, issues. Or you talked about the Atascadero track meets. Those things actually have a cost. We're trying to make the cost minimal for the kids to get out there and be able to go long jump or throw the turbo jab or something super fun like that. Get them outside. Get families outside. And we'd love to uh, continue to bring in sponsors that want to get into the community in that way. Be able to sponsor some of these athletes that just they, they don't have as much. Uh, they don't have the privileges that uh, others do out there or the resources to be able to compete uh, sometimes at those highest levels. So I'm thankful to be on Living and Run for that and uh, always looking for people to uh, contribute to us in that way. Yeah, that the Tascator All-Comers Meet is is probably one of the greatest family atmospheres you can go to around here. You can stay active. Your kids can get out there. You can get out there. You know, there's, there's no age limit on things. They're always willing to work with the athletes. Uh, you know, it's been going, I, I want to say it's been going for 12, 15 years now. It's, it's been a long time. And, uh, you know, th- to get people to go to that and, and to maybe get some sponsors uh, to help that meet uh, grow would be would be great. Oh yeah, your coach Harry Mayer is super involved in that. Uh, now a coach of Ashton Eaton, world record holder in the decathlon. Uh, these are great great events, and for those people that haven't done it uh, and haven't been there, they need to get out there. What a great family event! We went out every time, all four of us. Uh, you know, husbands, wives, little ones, you know, older ones. Everyone can participate, and you rarely see anybody not having a ton of fun. The people little kid, a ton of the fun. little kids race is one of the most exciting, I mean, I've been all over the world, I've seen a lot of races, there is nothing greater than the, you know, two-year-old race that, that when you can walk, they got a race for you, and those kids are so excited to run that race. I've, I've never seen that. It's great. Yeah, and you know, that's one of the things we've talked about a lot on this show, is, is having joy in what you're doing, <laughs> and uh, having a lot of fun, and, and so, great events, but there's a lot of people looking to have a lot of fun this weekend. Slow marathon again. If you're not involved, get involved. Come out to downtown Town. I know downtown was kind of tough last year because, of course, they block off a lot of the streets. But if you could get up, you could walk, take a walk in the morning, stroll, get downtown and support, get out on Johnson Street, get out on Orchid, Tank Farm. A lot of spots to be, uh, not just Madonna where, where the, the tents are going to be, but a lot of spots along the way. Encourage people. Uh, it's amazing what that'll, what that'll do uh, to somebody's uh, phys- physicality as they're starting to feel a little suffering out on the course. Or heckle. You know, I mean, some people, <laughs> maybe... maybe Maybe you don't want to cheer them on. Maybe you want to go heckle. Like I said, make up the sign that says, hey, only 15 more miles to go, you know? Whatever. As long as you're out there, like you said, you know, people uh, people enjoy uh, while you're running. They enjoy the inspiration regardless of, you know, as long as the heckling is controlled. Hey, uh, uh, talk about real quick. Uh, Paul, I was supposed to hand this shirt over to you during the show. Billy Smith, VS Athletics, uh, drop that by. 
beautiful, beautiful shirt. And again, this should just go to, uh, hopefully, maybe we can do a little zoom in on this. Uh, again, if you, if you miss any part of the show, you can always catch this thing on livingtherun.com or Facebook slash Living the Run. But we, we podcast these things on YouTube. We're going to get a close-up on Paul Tarek's shirt. What is this shirt all about? How did the design come into uh, come into play? Oh, man, this is a, it goes a long way back. Uh, so, so Billy, you know, I've known Billy for a long time. Uh, we got to talking the other day, and he says, I'm going to use, we got a, we got a, I think they have eight or ten uh, guys going down. They have a bunch of guys going down to the... Today, uh, actually. I saw a couple yeah, of them in the clinic. Arcadia uh, Decathlon. So they're going to go down to that and compete. And, you know, taking so many guys from the area, They he said, you know, why why just wear something that's already out there? Why wear something that's just, you know, blah? So he took uh, the design that I have uh, myself and my old training partner have for our tattoo. Uh, he took that design and he had it uh, imprinted on a shirt as the material. And then he's got a cool graphic. It's got all the events of the uh, 10 events of a decathlon in order uh, 100 for those of you that don't know 100 long jump shot put high jump 400 on day one and then uh, if you're lucky enough to wake up for day two 110 hurdles discus pole vault jab and 1500 <laughs> he's uh, embossed that on the shirt made it, or imprinted on the shirt made it look sweet uh, got the word decathlon down the back and uh, I, I think this I'm gonna have about 12 of these and this is gonna be my only outfit that I wear this is it <laughs> I like that lucky enough to make it to day two yeah uh, unbelievable you know it's a, it's a great sign over there uh, coach Gomes over at San Luis High is doing some really great things. He's got a bunch of multi athletes now, and uh, well, that's the way to stuff. go in high school. That's what, so many people get uh, specialized, and the problem with specialization is you, you only develop one set of muscles in in one way. Uh, you start exposing these high school kids to all the different events, they're going to have a better chance at finding something that they're you know that they may not know they're good at until they do it a few times, and then they really like it and they excel at it. You know, uh, plus it makes you just a well-rounded athlete. I mean, how many people in high school go, you know what? I want to run track and field for the glory of track and field. No, everybody does it to stay in shape for football or stay in shape for basketball or to meet girls. Those are the only reasons. So if you introduce them to all these other events, you know, it just opens their eyes to a whole new world. Uh, good kids, too. You know, props to uh, Dylan Smith. Saw him today, Billy's son. Uh, Connor Hall, monster athlete. Kids going to Duke next year. Um, doing great in the decathlon. Again, Coach Gomes, slow high, do well down at Arcadia, but uh, good guys. Hey, let's switch over. Usually we get Ryan Joyner athlete on Elite uh, at the end of the hour, but we're going to catch Ryan here at the beginning of the hour, because again, we've got Dean Carnazis coming on at 6.45 later in the show. Ryan, last week, I loved the conversation. We talked single leg squats. We talked balance, symmetry through the pelvis, through the lower back. Uh, this weekend, we got the big race. is finally here, second annual. Uh, how's it going over there at Athlon Elite? Yeah, it's going great. Good to see. Good to talk to you guys again. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, we're we're about eighty five percent of the way through our remodel. Massive, completely change of the facility, and so it's been pretty hectic. But at the same time, a lot of fun because we've already got out the new equipment and new facility and more open space, running space. We have a turf area now. We're doing some running and running drills and all that good stuff, yeah. which is well, what, perfect what, what for a marathoner. Thing, yeah. What were the big things there, Ryan, that you guys were trying to improve upon? Uh, that you felt were uh, weaknesses at uh, Athlon Elite there? Well, you know, the big thing that, um, and I've talked about it a couple times uh, calling into the show, is, you know, ultimately my belief in lifelong athletic development. I don't care if you're 90 years old, you can improve as an athlete and still be an athlete. Obviously, again, there's different levels that you're going to be, uh, different intensities that you're going to be operating at. But we wanted to have some more space and, and just be able to really utilize the facility for more athletic development. And and that's still through fitness. We're still a gym. We're still a fitness gym. We're getting people to uh, look good on the beach. But, you know, as, as our motto is, is uh, you know, um, form follows function. If I can get you to function better, you're going to look better. There's no doubt about it. That's how the human body is built. So uh, so that's really what we've been doing is, is improving that ability, and especially with uh, getting some open area and some chirp area to do running mechanics. Uh, you know, that's a big passion of mine is, is, is running mechanics and athletic running mechanics. So, you know, footwork, uh, quickness, reaction drills, that kind of stuff, uh, which is a lot of fun. And, and I guess on that note, uh, you know, in thinking about the marathon coming up, you know, and I'll get, here's Ryan. He's going to be talking about strength training again. Because I, I, to, what do they say? To the hammer, everything's a nail. Um, I do do a lot of strength training. I believe in it, you know, and, and from the, the point of powerlifting all the way to the point of, you know, again, doing a lot of metabolic type strength training where it's high reps um, and, and high volume 
uh, f for a lot of repetition. But nevertheless, it's all about strengthening. And if you want to talk about why strengthen, even as a marathoner, let's look at last year's winner. You know, he, he finished in two hours, what was it, two hours and 38 minutes? Yeah, 238, I think. Fast. Smoking yeah, fast. Yeah, so, so that's, that's averages at 10 miles an hour. So he ran for 26 miles, 10 miles per hour. Our treadmills go up to tw 10 miles an hour. You know, that's a sprint for most people. And the thing we want to think about in terms of forces, the forces on the body that that's going to entail, walking is, it, at times, again, depending on the person and the gait cycle, you can see up to two times their body weight in ground reaction forces. So when the heel hits the ground, they're seeing double their weight pushing back at them. Um, take that up to a fast walk, and you could be talking two to three times. Take it up to a jog and a run, you're looking at four times your body weight on one leg landing on the ground. At 10 miles an hour, he was experiencing five times his body weight, so he was doing a 600-pound single-leg squat every step for 26 miles is what you can say. Hey, I love it when you put it into a perspective like that. You start to you start to see why if the mechanics get off at all, symmetry gets off at all, tendons start to take stress, muscle belly start to take stress, and we start to run into injury. Yes. Yeah, hey, running and uh, running is such a strength-oriented activity, but it's, of course, it, it, it endurance dominant. But you still got to have a pretty good base level of strength and, of course, as you say, mechanics, symmetry, all the things need to be important, spine alignment, all that kind of stuff is key if you're going to be uh, increasing the volume of that kind of running, especially trying to do a marathon. And so, you know, where we come in is, is again, strength training, making sure that that base level of strength is, is in place, that the person can actually strength train and hold their body weight on one leg, doing those single leg squats, doing the rear foot elevated split squats, and of course, uh, even, you know, even heavy squats at times. But of course, I always tell people, come see us in the off season. You know, when you're in season, you got to hit the road and run, but you're going to do the work for your strength based development in the off season. Um, so anyway, yeah, th there's a lot of forces coming into the body, and strength is really key for a runner. You know, gravity is relentless, and it never has a bad day. So you better bring your A game every time you go out. Hey, awesome. Awesome as usual, Ryan. Look forward to seeing the new facility. Uh, keep up the great work, and uh, thanks th thanks for that stuff tonight. I mean, great stuff when you start to talk and you start to put those numbers out there for people. They start to really understand uh, the, the compression, the forces, etc., that come along with exercise. So uh, always nice to have co coaches like you out there. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All Good right. talking to you guys. Hey, go ahead, Paul. Well, one of the things he talked about that, that I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent is, is running mechanics, you know, uh, uh, just form running drills. Uh, I think people, a lot of people overlook them and just do them kind of half effort just to, just to get through them and get started on their run. But, uh, you know, there, there's a whole hidden workout in running mechanic drills. You know, a lot of people say, oh, how do I get my abs looking better? How do I get my abs looking better? Really, you know, some good running mechanic drills can be your only ab workout for the day, and your abs will be worked harder than, than doing just an ab workout. Yeah, no question. Let's expand on that in just a minute. Got to take a break now. When we return, we will hit, uh, hopefully get Van McCarty in studio here. Again, last year's winner, slow marathon. And then stick with us, Dean Carnazis at about 6.45 tonight. Dean Carnazis, 645, ultra marathon, man. Stick with us. We're back with Living the Run. Welcome back to Living the Run. Again, if you're uh, joining us for the first time, you can always find a podcast, YouTube video. Check out Paul's new shirt. <laughs> I, I love, I love <laughs> this shirt. Check out man. the new jersey. Slow High's using that jersey down at Arcadia uh, these next two days for the for the uh, their multi-athletes, heptathletes and decathletes. But uh, again, you can always look us up on livingtherun.com or Facebook slash livingtherun. And again, remember, stay tuned. CJ Silas Show coming up at 7 o'clock here on ESPN 1280. Anniversary Show show for them and uh i don't know why i can't think of the oh there it is the 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 new show <laughs> the new show for some reason it sounds so much like multiple other shows so i, I keep getting different words yeah put together but uh here it is 10 o'clock till midnight 10 o'clock till midnight on wednesday night the slow late show joining espn 1280 <laughs> 
Good stuff, Paul. I got You're going to be up to listen? I, I got a two-year-old. I am never. I haven't seen 10 o'clock. I haven't seen 10 o'clock except for night shifts. That's it, man. When I, oh, during the week, I am, yeah. Hey, that's that, that whole rest thing that we were talking about. Again, stay tuned with us. we got Dean Carnazes coming on, 645, ultra marathon man, Cal Poly graduate, uh, tr- tremendous, tremendous athlete uh, when it comes to just taking things to the brink, Paul, uh, pushing the limit, uh, almost beyond limits. It, it does sometimes doesn't even seem imaginable what he's doing, but uh, great celebrity uh, bring down for this slow marathon this weekend. It's uh, going to be good stuff. You know, the one thing I wanted to ask him that I, I, I never asked him before was when he when he left on that first run, you know, I mean, it, let's be honest. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous to think when he tells a story, it's like you listen and you're like, well, that's just ridiculous. Why would you do that? Did he actually think he was going to like make it there? You know what I'm saying? Like there's times you start something you're like, oh, there's no way, but I'm going to do this, you know, but there's that doubt in your mind. Or was he, you know, I mean, did he surprise himself? Was it, was it something where he was like, he got there and he was like, wait, I, I really just did that. Maybe, maybe I could, maybe I could do more of this. Well, I think he was, I mean, wasn't he a bit inebriated? I mean, he, he was, well, he was, yeah, well, yeah, I don't think, I guess, was, yeah. yeah, there wasn't really a goal of going San Francisco to Half Moon Bay or the 30 miles well, I thought that's se- what it was. I thought it was, I'm running to here. Oh, I thought it was just, I'm going to start running and uh, see that, where that I was, end no, up. No, no, that was Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump that you're thinking about. No, no. The, I think Ernest was, I think he was like, I'm because I think it was, I didn't have a ride or whatever, and I'm going, I'm going to run there. You know, no big deal. I'm just going to run over there. Well, you hit on a good thing there, Paul. I mean, one of the things I was talking to, to somebody about today was, is when you go out oftentimes by yourself, and I'm self-motivated, I have no problem getting out there, getting a workout in. I'm not going to miss workouts because somebody else cancels on me. But the reality is, is that when you do work out with someone else, especially someone who is uh, faster than you, potentially stronger than you, it pushes you. And it's so interesting, that concept of you feel like you're working uh, not as hard, yet your results are much better. I mean, when I run with Rando, I run five to 10 seconds faster in my 400 when we run 800 meters, 1200 meters, what have you, five to 10 seconds faster per 400, but I feel less fatigued. It's incredible the synergy of being with another athlete, especially somebody uh, who can encourage you and who's been at a higher level than you. Well, I think the big thing about that uh, is, is that when you're out there with them, you're not focused on every single step. You know, it's not. It's like when you're sitting alone in the dark, you hear every single noise. You know, it's you're out there with somebody else. You're kind of watching their form, kind of keeping pace with them, maybe keeping stride with them. Uh, you know, focus more on staying, keeping a distance. Uh, so you don't fall off pace as opposed to thinking keep running faster keep running faster keep doing this you know how, how, how much longer I am no, I am notorious for that like when I'm on my own how much longer how much I'm looking at the watch like you know instead of swinging my arms like most normal runners do I'm swinging my arm up just to look at my watch on every stride you know like oh, oh eight more seconds four more seconds yeah it's interesting too you know this show is so interesting because you, you look at this these aspects of health and fitness and so much of it is mental and you think about this guy you know this kind of nightmare of a coach that went went bad and Rutgers and a lot of his stuff was negative but the thing I took from it was is that how many of us have negative self-defeating talk when we go out to exercise you get out there and you start to think about the suffering you think about some of the pain you think about gosh I'm just kind of slow today or I feel weak or my energy isn't good and we start to kind of beat ourselves up very easily Uh, it seems not to happen when you can get a partner and that's why I encourage so many people hey yes we want you to get off the couch yes we want you to take that step get active but try to find somebody to get active with with, uh, maybe they're not going to be there every single day, but getting two or three times in a week is going to help you in your other workouts two or three times that, that week, and you're going to be able to keep some momentum going. Well, and I think the du- it's like a double-edged sword on that one, you know? They're helping you, but while they're helping you, you know, you're helping them as well. You know, you're, they're not going to be the number one guy every day. There's days that they're not going to want to be there. There's days that they're not going to be mentally in the workout, but the fact that you're there mentally in the workout will get them up to speed. You know, it, you've de- you definitely feed off each other. There was a, a huge difference between having a training partner and not having a training partner for me. Are you trying to give me hope that there's one day possibly that I could beat Rando on the track? Well, and I think there's a good thing to have about optimism, but then there's also realism. So let's 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 say optimism. Now, is Rando healthy, or did he did he lose a leg? Is he does he have a broken foot? I mean, there's an injured Rando is probably the only way uh, I pass him up. But uh, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, it's. Uh, it, Especially in your world, where the difference between uh, you know an 8,500 score on one day to an 8,200 or a, a sub 8,000, uh, 
could have just been a couple little things here or there, and a guy that high jumps, you know, six five one day, barely clears six foot the next, or misses on the pole vault or what have you. So you're right, uh, kind of fluctuates up and down, and and that's good mentally and physically for both. Yeah, yeah, I, I still think uh, as much as I'd love to think that you could beat Rando on the track one day, I think you're just gonna have to pick a very long distance <laughs> and just wear him down mentally. Hey, let's take a quick break. Van McCarty just walked into studio. We're gonna kind of get get Van up to speed here. Get him on again. Van McCarty last year's slow marathon winner. We're going to talk about uh, this year's course, defending the title, and who's on deck to try to strip the title. Uh, Stick with us. Van McCarty next here on Living the Run. Otherwise known as oxidative stress. If you want to learn how to reduce inflammation, save money by eliminating 90% of your supplement regime, and provide residual... with Living the Run. Uh, welcome back to Living the Run. Great show. Uh, great start to the show. We're excited about Slow Marathon coming up again Sunday, April 7th. But big, big weekend. Right now, lucky to be in studio. Had you last year. Last year's champion, male champion in the Slow Marathon, first marathon, 238, I think was the time. Yeah. Van McCarty in studio. Van, yes. struggling with an injury. Talk to us about what you've been dealing with and are you going to be ready for Sunday? Yeah, that's uh, still an up in the air question right now. Um, Everything the past several months had been run, uh, training been spot on. I was running really well, better than last year. So I was really excited for the race. I was all all prepped. And then um, a week and a half ago, I started my my taper, and I was just coming back from a run and felt the hamstring uh, just get really tight. And I tried to stretch it, and then it was just got to the point where I could barely even jog on it. And um, so I've been just trying to get it worked on, trying to get it uh, squared away. And you know, if it wasn't a marathon, you know, 26 miles is a long way to go. So um, we're going to kind of be, be day by day for now. Hey, so you know, going into this competition this second year, I know that the competition has heated up a little bit. Uh, it's now Boston Qualifier here in San Luis Obispo. wasn't last year. It's on the map for the second time. About twice as many participants coming in this year. What's the field look like? I know, you know, last year people don't understand this. You ran fast, but the reality was it was a tough run because you were out in front, nobody around really for a lot of the race. Difficult to do when there's nobody to challenge, what were you expecting this year from the competition and how this race was going to play out as opposed to last year? Well, I would have expected this year to be uh, more competitive just from the larger number of participants in the field. Um, unfortunately, I, I haven't seen a, a list or a roster of who the runners, who some of the faster runners might be. So without knowing any, any names, I personally have not heard of or seen anybody who is like a super fast runner. There are definitely some in the area. I'm just not aware of them, uh, if they're racing or not this weekend. Um, but even with competition, that, that 238.35 um, that I ran last year, for me, uh, if things were perfect, I could maybe knock a minute off of it, but not much more than that. So uh, that's kind of my, my capabilities. So there's some there's some guys down here. I mean Jamie Moore down in Royal Grande, who's super fast. He uh, he ran a sub 220 in Portland um, several months ago. Uh, so I haven't heard if he's going to come do this one. He's a really fast runner. And there's local guys I've heard talk that Sergio Reyes might come up and do it. Who's you know run 215 <laughs> at the trial. So you know there's there's people who could show up that are just going to blow the field away. Well, I think the one thing you're going to see now that it's a Boston qualifier and you're going to get more I don't want to say professional, but but possibly professional, you're going to get that lead pack that breaks away, you know, that you see at most marathons where there's, you know, the gun's going to go off and, and they're going to they're going to set the pace early and it and it's probably going to be quick, you know. Yeah, no, qu- no yeah. question. I mean, a little bit different maybe uh, than last year. Talk about, again, uh, you know, this course. For, pre- for people who don't understand the perspective of you as a runner, because you're also an Ironman triathlete, uh, qualified this year for Kona, uh, which is a little bit different because a lot of, a lot of these people that run in these 215s, 210s, these times, they're runners only. Uh, but you're, you are literally one of the fastest, again, talking to Van McCarty, one of the fastest marathoners of the Ironman. Ironman uh, last year in Wisconsin. What you take? You took third place in the in just the marathon portion, right. and you're among all professionals. Hey, you're a working right. guy. You work. <laughs> you you know you get the eight to five job. Yet you're coming in running really fast. Talk about this course in comparison to some of the other courses, and why the times might be a little bit slower here. Well, at San Luis Marathon definitely they've done a great job with the course. It, it is more challenging than most marathon courses, especially now that's a Boston qualifier. 
you have that carrot for a lot of people that are looking to qualify for Boston. And the San Luis course, it's definitely uh, a good course to qualify on, but it is it is more challenging. It's very little flat roads, so people that are looking who are just going to say, I'm going to run a seven-minute mile because that's my qualifying time and be done with it, you know, their, their times are going to fluctuate uh, substantially on those rollers. Even even for me, when I go out and did, was doing my training, you know, on the flat flatter sections out and back, I was running maybe 545, 550 miles, and then on the rollers down to like a 615. So you can't expect to run a steady pace. Um, so that's, you know, if you're not prepared for it, that's going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, if, if people haven't been out on these hills, and we have the fortunate uh, ability to train on these hills, but things get rolling uh, pretty rapidly. And if that's not your training style, you know what it is. Hey, I wanted to ask you this, Van. Uh, we talked last week about debunking the myth on this 800 meter runs. You know, I've read all over the place that if you can run eight 800 meters, whatever you run that at should transfer over close to your marathon time. Again, for the listeners, if you run a three-minute 800-meter, should transfer over close to a three-hour marathon. If you run a 330, 330 marathon, four-minute, four-hour marathon, and so it goes and so it goes. Uh, I'm calling bunk on that. We went out there, uh, a a former uh, decathlete like Paul and myself went out there, not even close. We could run the 800 meters way faster, eight 800s, Mm -hmm. than we we could ever put on a marathon. How does it go for a professional Ironman triathlete? How does it go for a professional marathoner? That's interesting because that is a very, very popular and common workout for marathoners to do. It's what Bart Yasso, I believe, is the one who came up with it. Um, yeah, and he said if you run these 800s, eight to ten of them with a, a moderate rest in between, that should transfer close. And to me, honestly, it makes no sense. <laughs> At all. I like but, it, Paul. I'm right on. I'm right yeah, on. It makes no sense to me. However, uh, from my training, it has transferred over relatively close. Um, I, I would usually, if I was doing those workouts, I would, def- I, I would take a, a more abbreviated rest, so I didn't take as long of a rest as they would recommend. But I would hit my 800s at around... 237, 239, which is about what I'm running, uh, you know, marathons at. So for me, it transferred over relatively quickly or relatively um, straightforward. The concept behind it and the logic, I, I, it's like pulling things <laughs> but, but out of the air. I have no how, but I idea how he came up with here's that. Here's the thing, though, and, and I think I don't know. Again, I don't have the formula to how he came up with it. I'm, I, I would think he maybe trial and errored it with with some people who are training for marathons. Mm-hmm. Rex, the longest run you've been doing when you tried this, the longest run you've been doing, what do you think? Uh, longest run, 10, 10, 10, 10 miles. Maybe how long? Yeah. How often? Once a... Uh, once every couple weeks. Couple weeks. Yeah. How, at the time that it transferred over for you, yeah. fan, how, how longest run you've been doing? Uh, 25 <laughs> how often? miles once a week. So so I think the thing is, he's got the mileage in, and, and all that's going to tell you, all the, uh, the 800 meter time trial, we'll call it, is going to tell you is that you have the capability to carry that foot speed uh, for for a certain time, and, th- and that should transfer over, provided that you're doing the rest of the marathon workouts. You can't just train for the 800 and go, look at that, I'm running, I'm running 210 800s. This is yeah. terrific. I ran a 210. You know, it doesn't work like that. Well, well no question. But I mean, again, I was just trying to, to get a, 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 an idea of pace mm-hmm. and an idea of time, not being an elite runner by any stretch, and it just doesn't work. <laughs> it's just not even close for me, you know. Uh, yeah. But I just I wondered from an elite runner what that looked like. Well, you know, Dean Carnaz is coming to, to support this. Uh, you know, the, the whole ultra thing. Have you ever dabbled in the ultra thing, uh, Van? Is it something that you think about once you kind of finish uh, maybe the, the Ironman world? Uh, is something you ever look at, or is that 26 miles at the top for you? Stick with the Ironmans and, uh, and, and call it good. Well, um, actually, I've yeah I've done um, a bunch of ultras. Actually, nothing nothing extreme. None of the hundred mile runs. I've done up to forty miles, um, and I actually love I love the trail races. Um, actually, I train predominantly on trails, regardless of what my training get. If I am doing marathons or triathlons, I love the trail races. Whole different whole different world. You know, obviously pace is completely different. Um, yeah, but ultras are great, 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 great stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Hey, let's take a quick break. Dean Carnaz is going to be on the phone with us in just a minute. Can you hang around? Yes, definitely. We'll talk to Dean. Yeah, we'll talk to Dean Carnaz's ultra marathon man in moments. We're back with Living the Run. 
Welcome back to Living the Run here on ESPN 1280. The ticket still in studio with last year's winner, Van McCarty, nursing a hamstring injury. We're praying for Van to be healthy. Want to see him out there putting up a big time. 238 last year, looking to defend his championship. On the line with us now, the biggest face in ultramarathon running, Cal Poly graduate, inspiration to many, author of several books now, 50-50-50, ultramarathon man, run. Dean Carnazes, thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be have, thanks for having me back on. I'm honored. Hey, clear it up for us, Dean, right off the bat. You're not here to win the slow marathon, are you? <laughs> It's a slow marathon. Maybe it's a fast marathon. I'd, I'd, I'd try for it. But. Hey, the other big question out there seems to be is when Dean finishes uh, at Madonna, is he going to turn around and run home to the Bay Area? Is that part of the workout this weekend? If you'll bring me some food along the way, I'm down for that. I think Paul's ordered a large pizza for you. He'll uh, round, round table, right? Round table's the best. Yeah, Hawaiian style is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Dean, uh, what, what excites you most about coming back to Cal Poly? I know you're a Cal Poly graduate. Uh, coming back to Slowtown to participate in this event, uh, how'd Samantha Pruitt get you and lure you down here? It wasn't hard. I mean, <laughs> she didn't have to do much arm twisting. Uh, you know, I, I, it, unfortunately, it hasn't fit into my schedule the past couple of years, and I've tried as hard as I could to get there. And I'm so looking forward to it uh, now that it all worked out. I've heard great things, and, you know, you guys have been there firsthand. You've told me great things. And so it's just it's just it's just great to be back. A lot of love from Cal Poly, from my old um, stomping grounds, and I'm just looking forward to a really really terrific run. It is the happiest place on earth. I mean, that's a true story, fact. <laughs> hey, probably as a student, Dean, you weren't uh, you probably weren't out there running the hills as much of uh, Edna Valley and so forth. Uh, good good course, hilly course, uh, great training course for you, right? Because again, uh, you're looking at Badwater this year. You're looking to be super successful there, and your training model is all about that this year. Is it not? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of back-to-back events. I've, you know, I've, I've done, uh, I think, uh, what have I done? Two, two, three, two marathons in the last two weeks. And this will be the third. And then after uh, after um, San Luis Obispo, it's off to Boston. Then um, a couple others, including Big Sur. So I, I love doing these uh, marathons as training runs because, you know, let's face it, if I went on a 26.2-mile run on my own, I, I might bump up the pace a little bit. But when you're in a crowd, you just get caught up in the energy and the excitement, and you end up running, you know, a, a harder, a, a, you know, a faster pace than you normally would. So it's really great training for me. Now, Dean, when you come down here, have you been down to San Luis recently and done any of the uh, of the course, or is this going to be just kind of a show up and blow up kind of thing? Yeah, no, it's show up and blow up. I mean, it's uh, it's immersion and the experience. I, you know, I know a lot of the course. I mean, I you know, I just from uh, being around uh, San Luis Obispo for so many years, and you know, I used to windsurf a lot out of Lake Lopez, which you guys probably know, and and so I know a lot of the course. But I just wanted to see it all through fresh eyes. Hey, you're uh, you know, you're an inspiration to so many. Uh, the, the 50 50 50 book and documentary that you had going, going into different towns, inspiring, running with others. I know you're looking to do the same thing here. There's going to be groups and different people uh, running along with you. But I also know you got a, 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 you're, you're talking and you're inspiring as well. you got to talk on Saturday. Tell us a little bit about what uh, the details are on that so that people can come out and uh, listen to you, listen to your story and get motivated to uh, live the run. You know, it's a bit of, of motivation, you know, hopefully through inspiration. I'm, I'm not very good at, you know, prescribing advice to people. So I kind of um, just tell my story and, you know, if they glean some insight from that, uh, so be it. But I'll talk a little bit about, you know, some of the adventures I've done, uh, you know, some of the preparations I go through in preparing for a marathon or half marathon, how I go about recovering afterward. So some practical tips as well. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, the, the true mark of a champion is, is not someone who continues to, to race and compete for themselves, but, you know, learns anything, you know, takes any gift that they've got, anything they've learned along the road, and passes it along to other people so that other people can be the best um, that they can be, and that's kind of my intention in when I give talks. Hey, talk about your passion there. You know, we had uh, the marathon goddess, Julie Weiss, who was on a couple weeks ago, and I don't know if you'd heard about her, but she did 52 marathons in 52 weeks trying to raise money for pancreatic cancer. What is it that Dean Carnazis is after? Who is the group or or uh, the, the embodiment that you are trying to support and, and give back to? Well, you know, it goes beyond running, I think. I, you know, my, my message is basically, uh, you know, enjoy, indulge in life. <laughs> be the best.
best that you can be. I mean, you don't have to be out there, you know, cracking uh, three hours even on your marathon or even four hours. Uh, just do the very best that you can do. And that, you know, that, that lesson kind of extends beyond running into other, you know, practical life lessons. Uh, as runners, I think we, we've learned some valuable things along the way. I mean, we've learned that, you know, how do you, you know, how, how do you achieve success? And the recipe is simple. <laughs> Hard work, you know, dedication, sacrifice, and commitment. And, you know, th- those same sort of qualities uh, carry over into life and I think help people be more fulfilled than just living everyday life. Hey, Dean, uh, thanks so much for joining us. I know your schedule's tight. Uh, thanks for inspiring our listeners. Thanks for coming here to San Luis Obispo. It's going to be a great, great weekend. And uh, having you here, uh, I just have the whole energy, as you said, uh, to be out on that course and to be doing something special, to be using running as a, a mode and a vehicle uh, you know, to maximize our lives. No, I, I look forward to it, and I look forward to all of the listeners that are out there coming out and hearing me talk and, uh, and then sharing some footsteps with you. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff, uh, Dean. Thanks so much again for joining us. See you this weekend. Okay. See you soon. <laughs> hey, that was Dean Karnazes, ultramarathonman.com. He's got three different books, Ultra, uh, The Ultra Marathon Man, Run, and 50-50-50. You know, Van, when you see that, uh, pretty incredible stuff that this guy has taken running, a passion of his, and made it a career, a yeah. life career. Yeah, is that like is that the greatest thing or what? <laughs> Just spend your spend your life doing what you like and then talking about it. Yeah, you no. know, and inspiring people. He's he's a phenomenal motivational speaker. I saw him a couple years back at Big Sur. Um, I'm gonna throw this out there really quick because. He may not be the fastest marathoner out there on Sunday, but the guy just runs forever. The Big Sur Marathon, you have to take a bus at 4 o'clock in the morning from Carmel or Monterey, and they bust you to Pfeiffer Beach down at Big Sur. So you have to take this bus at 4 in the morning to the marathon. We're on this bus. It's like 4.30 now, and we look, and he's running to the race start from Monterey. So he ran 26 miles to the race start, hung out for like an hour, turned around, and then ran the race back up to Carmel. It's like... What what the hell? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, his, he's he's just uh, he's phenomenal. Mentally tough, physically brilliant. Uh, his mechanics are perfect. Uh, every step is the same. Uh, never never runs into problems mechanically. He's really got that uh, stride down. You know, one of the things he, that that he talked about there is just finding meaning in, in in running. You know, finding meaning in what you're doing, and and I think that's really important. A lot of people kind of go out and drudge through it, and and don't use it as an opportunity to you know sort things out in their head, and and uh, and really find. A direction. Yeah, you know, and he kind of said it too. What we were, we you know alluded to earlier in the show. You get around other people, and now all of a sudden the event becomes a little easier. <laughs> The pace goes a little bit faster, and you don't even realize, realize that you're working harder uh, a lot of the times. The suffering is a little bit less. That's why I thought, Van, it's interesting to me that you said out on your own, it was actually okay, and you don't think that you would have gone a lot faster. I, I don't think that that's the norm out there. Don't you think that the norm is get the pack together, push one another, and uh, eventually that pace goes up? Well, I think well, I agree with you with running in a, in a group. If they're going quicker, then definitely you're – if you want to stay with them, you have to, you know, go with it. Um, I just think from from my standpoint, from my training, that um, I think physically, capability-wise, I don't know if I would have ran much quicker if there was a lead pack. If there was someone who, if, even if someone's going to run like a 234, 235, I don't know if I could have maintained that pace all the way through. Um, however, with people, it definitely takes your mind off things because I know when I came back, coming back into town on the marathon last year after being out by myself for like 19, 20 miles. Then all of a sudden I was coming back through where all the half marathoners were coming into town who did the out and back section. And so then it was a matter of going, you know, going through the crowds and finding the w- place to run. So there's all these people running and mentally I was uh, I wasn't even thinking about how much how much I was hurting because now I'm just like looking at all the people around me and there's just so much more going on. It, it went by so much quicker, so much easier than just looking at the road straight ahead and just seeing a motorcycle up, <laughs> up the road a ways. So it definitely definitely is easier mentally when you got people around you. Yeah, no question. No, I, I just, I'm listening to this and it's like, it's funny to hear somebody describe the last little bit of a marathon. You know, it's a lot easier. It was, like, it, was, it, was, it was mile 24, you know, sure, 
are you really sure it was easier? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I remember listening to Dean. And again, if you missed Dean Carnazza's interview, you missed any of this interview with uh, last year's champion Van McCarty here at Slow Marathon, check us out on uh, livingtherun.com, Facebook slash Living the Run. We'll put these podcasts up tomorrow as well as the YouTube. But I remember Dean talking about a 200-mile race from, I think it was Calistoga or something, to Santa Cruz, and he runs the last mile in sub-six. How do you run the last mile he, he in sub-six? He was saving himself. Yeah, right. <laughs> he yeah. warmed up. Yeah, he warmed the first 109. 199, I think. 199. First 199, yeah. and, and then, then he that last the mile. Yeah. He was ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, negative split. Yep. <laughs> yeah, negative he split. split. Yeah. He was storing up that energy. Yeah. Well, Van, uh, super great to have you in studio. Our expectation is, is that a miracle is going to happen, that hand. <laughs> We're hoping for. Yeah, that hamstring is going to be in good. Use the spider tech tape. Definitely. There'll probably be a bunch of it out there. Right. Don't try to put it on yourself. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we'll try to get that hamstring healthy. Uh, but uh, good luck defending your championship. Thank you. And, Always uh, a pleasure to be here. Yeah, look forward to, uh, to, to to tune in with you and finding out about how it went. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Well, Paul, uh, tips and takeaways here on the show. Uh, we, ju- we just just over a minute left. What did we learn today? I- I'm, I'm going to go with the one I've already used. Man. Finding meaning. If you're out running, you know, use it as an opportunity to find meaning in, in what you're doing you know don't just go out and drudge through it and use it as a, uh, a sentence you know do some do some soul search and do some thinking really kind of figure it out yeah no question I'd say you know find somebody uh, to help you do that I think that the, there's motivation in other people there's energy in other people it's obvious Dean said it uh, Van has said it we've all know it that when we can get out with other people people that uh, can motivate us a little bit it'll take us that next level and again it'll help us in those workouts when we don't have somebody else just knowing to get that energy through a good workout, knowing what we've done in the past to uh, propel us forward. Well, exciting stuff, uh, Slow Community. Our last shout-out to you guys. Come out for this Slow Marathon. Come out and support. Get downtown. Get on Johnson. Get out on Tank Farm. Get out on Orchid. Support these runners. Give a high five. Give a smile. Give a clap. Give some energy to these folks because it goes a long, long way in distracting from the suffering. So we'll check in with next. We'll check in with the winners next week on, here on Living the Run. CJ Silas Show next, and then the Slow Late Show making his debut 10 o'clock here on ESPN 1280 to take.